Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And today, what I'm going to be covering is one of the questions from my Praxis Prep course that I just began this past weekend with some very dedicated and capable teachers from the Baltimore City Public School System. All right, so this is one of the problems that we didn't really have a chance to go over during our session this past Saturday. So I told them I would create a video where I go through a whole tutorial of this problem and how to break it down. So the first thing, this is number six. This is number six from page 87 of the problems that I sent out to them. So if f of x, and f of x is just the name of a function. The letter f basically stands for the word function, right? And when you see the parentheses with the x inside, that's read f of x, meaning there could be different x values that will determine the value of all of this over here, right? So you have f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 4. All right, if f of x is equal to this, which of these are true? So we have five multiple choice uh, selections. We want to know which one is true. All right, now, more than one of these can be true as well, okay? Which ones are true? So we just go through one at a time, and based upon what we know about uh, how to graph quadratic equations, because that's what this is. This is a quadratic. Now, how do I know it's a quadratic? Because the biggest exponent you see is a 2. See that? The biggest exponent you see is a 2. So that's how I know this is a quadratic. Now, another thing I know about this, all right, because it's a quadratic, this is what the graph is going to look like. And this is just like a quick and dirty sketch. Um, quadratics are called, the graphs are called parabolas, right? They either like a U, right side up, a U, or I should go like this, or upside down, right? Now, this particular parabola, right, meaning it's either going to look like this, or it's going to look like this. The graph of this is going to look like one of these, all right? Now, how do I know if it's facing up, or how do I know if it's facing down? this number right here no matter what that number is if that number is positive it's going to open up think positive up right when you feel positive you're in a good mood you're positive your spirits are up all right that's how this graph is when you're in a negative mood you know you have negative vibes your spirit is down right you might feel kind of depressed a little bit right so that's how the graph looks okay so, in here, we have a negative 2, right? Now, this negative 2 means that this graph is going to open downward. It's going to open downward. Now, let me jump ahead a little bit because I also know that one of my answer choices, choice B, it says the graph of f of x, which is all of this, opens downward. So, because I know that this is a negative 2, I know that that's at least one of my answers. At least. That's at least one of my answers. All right. Now, again, remember that. Commit that to memory for when you take the exam. If you see a quadratic equation and you're asked about the graph, anything about the graph, if this is called the lead coefficient, right? If the number that's connected to the x squared, or it could be any variable, it could be b squared, it could be d squared, but the number connected to the variable squared is a negative, it opens down. If it's positive, it opens up. All right. Now, um, back to this, back to my original um, approach, which was to just go through the answer choices. The max value of f of x is negative 4. Now, max value, okay? Now, I know that it has a max value because we already discussed the fact that it's going to open down. So because it opens down, it's got a maximum value. This is the highest point. Think about a roller coaster. Roller coaster starts at the bottom, comes up to the top. That's the maximum point. That's the highest point, and then it drops. And that's when it's fun, right? So the max value is this point right here. That is the vertex. That's called the vertex. Now, we got to do a little bit of math now. Because the maximum value, right, if I know what the vertex is, um, then I know what the maximum value is. Now, the maximum value is the vertical height, basically how tall the parabola is, right? The highest point of it. And that will be the y value. But before I find the y value, I need to find the x value. Okay? Now, this is in 
standard form. So when it's in standard form, I have to use a formula that looks like this. Negative B over 2A. That's the formula I use to find the X value of the vertex. So basically what I'm trying to say is this. When you look at answer choice A, it says the max value of F of X is negative 4. So whenever you're talking about max value, you're talking about the vertex. All right. Because this opens downward, it's got a highest point. The highest point is the vertex. The highest point is the vertex. Now I know the high, now that I know the highest point is the vertex, I know that the actual coordinate of the highest point of the height is going to be the y value. But before I get the y value, I got to get the x value first because once I know the x value, then I can figure out what the y value is. So I got to do this step by step. And I use this formula to find out the x value. Now, when you look at this, it says negative b over 2a. Now, you probably should be wondering to yourself, well, where's the b at? I don't see no b right here. Where's the a at? I don't see no a right here. The b and the a represent numbers in certain spaces in this equation. The b represents the number that's next to what's called the linear term, or this term that's to the first power, this variable to the first power. So in this case, the b is 8, right? Because it's the number that's attached to, or the coefficient of, but attached to the x. All right, so I'm going to write negative 8 because I have B, and you always put the negative sign in front of it because we're following the formula. Then down here, what I, you should be wondering, well, what's A? A is the same number that determines whether the graph opens upward or opens downward. All right, so I do 2 times negative 2. All right, so I just do my math. So now I got my numbers all plugged in, so now I just got to just follow order of operations. So now I'm going to have negative 8, and then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Remember, a positive times a negative is a negative, right? Remember that. And then I got negative 8 divided by negative 4, which is positive 2. So that's my x value. So for my vertex, I got a 2 for my x value, and now I want to find out what my y value is. The way I find out what my y value is, is I take this 2, and I basically plug it into this equation right here. And then whatever number I end up with, after I do all the math, that's my y value. And that's going to be my maximum value of f of x. All right? So then I say, all right, well, let me go down here because I got more space. So I say negative 2 times replace the x with a 2 squared plus 8 times another 2. So I replace the x and minus 4. And then I do order of operations. 2 squared is 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Then over here, 8 times 2, 16. Then over here, minus 4. I do negative 8 plus 16. Negative 8 plus 16 is 8. 8 minus 4 is positive 4. Right? Not negative 4 positive 4. Not negative 4. So we know that A is wrong. All right. Now, let's look and see if there are any other ones I can just figure out real fast. So f of x is not a one-to-one -one function. So we do know that that's true. f of x is not a one-to-one -one function. One-to-one -one function means that every x value matches up with exactly one, one y value and vice versa. Right. So meaning if the graph looks like this, Right? When y is this value, for this x value, it's going to be again, y is going to be over here again. So y matches, so this, so this x value matches up with, well, actually, no, the y value matches up with two different x values. So because the y value matches up with two different x values, it's not a one to one function. Because each y value, all these y values, right? Now imagine what the coordinates of that point would be. And if you went over here, the coordinates would have the same y value, but different x values. So it's also, it's true, it's not a one-to-one -one function. And then, choice E, the endpoints of the graph point in different directions. So I already told you, the graph is going to look like this. These are the endpoints, right? They go on forever, right? The line goes on, the curve goes on forever. But they're going in the same direction, right? So we know that that's not true. The only thing we left, we know A wasn't true, we know E wasn't true, we know B and D are true. Now we just need to figure out if C is one of the answers. The graph of f of x has no x-intercept. 
First of all, what is an x-intercept? An x-intercept is a point or a value where the graph crosses this axis, the x-axis. That's the y-axis, that's your vertical, that's the x-axis, that's your horizontal. Now, how do I know? I know this answer by looking at what my vertex is. If my vertex is 2, 4, remember, that's the highest point, like the roller coaster, the highest point on the roller coaster. So if I know my vertex is 2, 4, imagine it's like this, right? So I go, I start at the origin, I go over two spaces and up four spaces. Now that's my highest point right there, right? Now, if this curve is going to go down like this and open downward and go on forever, that means that it's going to look something like that. And look what happened. Doesn't this cross the x-axis? Yeah. In two places, right? So because it crosses the x-axis and goes through the x-axis, there are x-intercepts. So that means when it says the graph of f of x has no x-intercept, we also know that that is not true. All right? So this, this question was a little, a little bit much, and it really requires like some understanding of quadratic equations, parabolas, uh, some, some topics that you'll get into in like an Algebra 2 class or like an early in a pre-calculus class. So as, as, I said in, as I said in our session on Saturday, in terms of preparing for the praxis, this is one of the questions that, you know, if you don't already have that background knowledge, it may take a lot of time for you to really kind of master these topics. But definitely, I mean, try. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it is. Um, keep rewinding it and looking back on it. Um, take notes on a lot of the things that I said, especially about how to find the vertex of a quadratic using this formula, right, to find the x value and then take that x value and then plug it into the equation and figure out what the y is by using order of operation, right? But, you know, it, it, take, it takes a lot. So, again, we, got, we want to be economical with our time as we're preparing for this test. So, you know, by all means, like, you know, if you can, if you can learn some things, like kind of cram and learn some things about how to graph quadratic equations, how to graph parabolas, and just some of the, like, the integral parts of this, then by all means. Um, but yeah, but like I said, I hope this video helped. And, you know, we'll discuss some more things on this Saturday coming up. And as always, uh, do remember that there's all this math all around you.